superstars. So we are on our seventh episode now of Dressage Explained. I just wanted to say thank you so, 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 so much for making this, this segment possible. This series is ultimately a Q&A and, &A, and you know, a Q&A could be a little bit boring, <laughs> but I really pushed for it because it's something that I really feel like everybody needs to have. You need to be able to watch the videos and then ask the nitty gritty questions in association with that. Also, it's a platform for you to ask questions. Hey, Wessel. Ask questions that I don't think about, okay? So keep them coming, keep supporting it, and this is what's gonna get you across the line with your goals. It's this platform to be able to go, Leisha, watch this video, and I've got this question, or I can't find a video on X, and it goes onto this, and hopefully I can make it. So thank you so much for doing it. I really appreciate it, and thank you so much for allowing it to continue. Keep those questions coming. As long as you keep the questions coming, I'll keep the segment up. So thank you. Okay, so sorry guys, I've moved spots because I was a bit distracting at where I was before. All the horses were being very loud drinking. So book mouse. Book mouse is the next question. It's quite a long question. You can see it just underneath here. So pause and have a little read. But it's all about fear and how fear affects people differently and how you ultimately get over your fear in riding. Now Something that you hear from a lot of people is, you don't need to be afraid, just suck it up, you'll be okay. That's all well and good, but at the end of the day, why are we fearful? We're generally fearful because of the consequences of riding, and the consequences of riding can be quite significant. The consequences of riding are the unknown, when none of us are really gonna get on a horse that we think is gonna do the wrong thing to a really bad extent. It's more that we feel like we might lose control. So in my experience, fear is mostly based off losing control. And I personally have felt that in the past where I feel like, oh, I'm really afraid and I see other riders not afraid. And what I've worked out is it's because they had control and I didn't. So this particular one is a little bit about cantering and how to handle your fear of cantering. And there are so many different ways that you can look at it, but this is one that I think will relate to a lot of people that you can start to action tomorrow. And that is, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you start canter? One bite at a time. If canter makes you afraid, don't do long periods of it. If you're fearful to strike canter, then strike canter, then trot immediately. Strike canter, then trot immediately. Strike canter, then trot immediately. So that you take control. You gain control of everything. When that striking canter doesn't, up, doesn't offend you or upset you or scare you anymore, then strike canter and canter on for one or two strides and then trot again. The key to me is to gain control by doing it in small, small chunks. And you could do it 20 times up the long side of the arena, but that you canter, trot or walk, go, am I okay? Yes, I am. And then try again. Am I okay? Yes, I am. And then try again. Am I okay? Yes, I am. And then try again. Give yourself permission to not just canter around and around and around and around and around. Take one bite at a time. We do that in general life. We do that often in our own lives. But we, for some reason when we get on a horse, we're afraid of cantering and now we just expect to canter the whole time. It doesn't have to be like that. Canter a little bit and then build on it, build on it, build on it, build on it, build on it. If it's outside of canter and it's some other situations, let's say, you're afraid of riding a certain horse because you think he might buck you off, for example. Learn how to prevent that. So again, it might not be riding him more often. It might be watching somebody else avoid the scenario. So you're like, oh, now I know what to do. It might be watching some few videos on how to avoid that scenario and then try again. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is what takes your fear away and making things achievable is what takes your fear away. Don't be afraid to make things smaller or take a step back to get knowledge, to grow. You might find that even though you take a step back for a week, two weeks, a month, even a year, in five years time or in five months time or five weeks time, you might be further along than if you were if you just took, than if you, than if you were if you just kept going the way you were going.
Even though maybe you're cantering 20 metres right now, for example, but you're afraid, if you just canter for one metre and then two metres and then three metres and then 20 metres, you're backward for a week, you're doing less metres, but by the time you've added a month or two, you're well ahead of 20 metres. You're cantering outside, for example. So don't be afraid to come back to go forward, okay? Don't be afraid to say, I'm afraid. It's okay to be afraid. You just have to work out how to get around that, okay? Great question, and I hope that helped. I wanted to thank you all so much for all of your support. I am having so much fun teaching all of these. I'm having so much fun answering these questions. I'm really, really heart warm, it's warmed my heart, for lack of a better word, to um, see how much you guys are responding to these questions. So I'm gonna put more and more effort into them, keep the questions going, and um, we can make this episode bigger and bigger and bigger and better all of the time.